Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're working on block 11. Almost done. Oh my gosh, we only got five more to do. There's 16 blocks in this project and by golly we see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm very excited. So most of you know I've been doing two sets of these blocks, one for each of my sisters, um, and uh, it's obviously a Christmas gift to them. They I probably don't watch the video, so they're gonna be completely surprised, which is awesome. So I am almost I'm done the first one, and I'm still working on the second one, and uh, we're just gonna put it all together. So I have selected different Christmas fabrics or fabrics that could be deemed as Christmas because I have a black and white polka dot here. It doesn't mean it's Christmas. Uh, there's also gray with red triangles, but you know, you play with your fabric and mix and match and suit it to your needs. I made every house different. You can make them all the same. Uh, I Some of my windows coverings are the same. I figured it's the home association. So you had to keep within a certain, you know, boundary of your window coverings. I don't know. Just have fun. So we have two more blocks to do. It is a very simple block. That's it. You're just doing it times six. Okay. So you have your beautiful window, and then you're going to put your strips on either side, and then your strips on either side of that. And of course, you're going to make your top. Now, I have used in this project a couple of directionally challenged fabrics, as you'll see here. Okay. On this one. This is some cardinal fabric on black and I made sure that the birds were going in the right direction. Actually there's no bird in there but you know uh, it's still it's it's important. To, if you have directional fabric try and play as much as you can in the direction of it. We do have one of those we're gonna fl uh, piddle, fiddle with today <laughs> and that is some um, I don't know I guess it's called winter bird and it is also directional fabric. Okay. So let's just get started. We got to build, let's build our top first because you can see right here, I've already started on the one side. So you take your three and a half inch square, mark on the dia diagonal and line it up. And so you're nice and square via the 90 and the zero and you just sew down. And of course that extra little bit right there, you just kind of, if you wanted to, you don't have to. You pop over just a couple of, um, you know, a foot space and then some and sew down again. And then you can add some, oops, I'm going to make a mess here, and I'm sorry, to your half square triangle bucket or bag or box or container or whatever it is you may have. And you would be very surprised, let me tell you, very surprised how many projects you can get a half square triangle out of and make something out of later, let me tell you. So I ha there's a video. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to finish this off. We're going to sew right down here and again pop over, do another sew and cut off in between and that will go into the bucket. This project so far has allowed me, being two, doing two of them at the same time, uh, has allowed a lot to be collected into the half square triangle bucket. Uh, lots of this neutral background as well as whatever fabric I've been working with and it's been very fun, let me tell you. I'm very excited. Uh, I also have one little chunk of hedgehog fabric here. It is cute and adorable. I'm going to totally put that up to the camera so the camera can see that. It is a treasure. That's all I got of this fabric. Maybe in like another two inch square of it. That's about it. And it is going to be a roof. So we'll have to make sure to set that up too. Okay. All right. So that goes with that. This goes with this. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's finish off this one first and then we'll work on the hedgehog one and then we'll finish building up those two little houses that we need next, okay? Wake up Nomi here. It's been resting for a moment. It's been hard at work, plugging away at all sorts of projects. And of course, we're just gonna hop over here and take that other little opportunity to get our half square tri triangle just like a, 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 a foot hop and then a little bit more. We're gonna square this up anyways. So, okay, and then we just come in with our cutter and just go right in between. You could use your measure if you want and then that goes in your bucket and look, 
you get a big collection of those, you got yourself an awesome project. Like uh, people were suggesting, I was asking because they saw the bucket on my desk the last uh, Saturday live stream. And um, some people suggested making a quilt. Some people suggested just making a wall hanging. Some people suggested making a table runner. I mean, there's lots in that bucket. I don't clearly want to use them all, all at once, uh, but uh, I wouldn't mind using some of them. I keep them tamed. <laughs> Again, with the hedgehog. The hedgehog is also directional, so I'm making sure the he hedgehogs are upright, not upside down. I just thought some, there is a lot of fabric. You'd be very surprised. A lot of fabric out there, once you think about it, is very directional. So if you wanted to make something like a house or uh, another, you know, a project that, you know, required everything to sit in a certain direction and hung in a certain direction, if you wanted to put like loops up the top or something like that, or lay on the bed or what have you, um, you know, you have to, you have to stick your fabrics in the right direction. And hopefully you have enough to be able to make those cuts that you need for lengthwise and widthwise. That's maybe something to take note into consideration. If you find a fabric that is directional and you want to use it for a project, I'd probably grab another meter of it, at least. At least another meter of it. Okay, cut that off. Fold that out. Okay, now we got our two roofs done and our little bits here to go to the half square triangle bucket. Okay. Now, for the red one, I wanted to put the little uh, winter bird. So we need to have our top and our bottom to go on either side of our square. So that to me is the top, okay, because the bird is upright. And here, there, that it would also be the bottom. So we want to make sure we're sewing those together and those together, making sure our birds are still nice and upright. Okay. Or snowmans or whatever it is that you had that was directional uh, in your quilt fabric, okay? And don't be afraid to use directional fabric. And if you want to use it all wackadoodle, then go ahead and use it all wackadoodle. That's it's, it's, it's your project. You do what's good for you. Have fun. Have fun with the fabric. That's really all I want to encourage in people is just have fun with the fabric. Make stuff. Learn. Learn from your mistakes. Okay, so now we got those two and they are going in the correct way. We're going to move them just to off to the side and we're going to work on our other little window while we're here. Now, the center is directional, but the strips to go on top and bottom are not. So there you go. Nice close up of that. It's got snowmans, uh, trees, Santa, a, a reindeer presents, um, stockings, and also, you know, trees and everything else like that. And then I've used a really colorful polka dotted. Uh, fabric as well. So this doesn't scream uh, Christmas either, but it doesn't mean it doesn't remind me of Christmas lights. So I've used it. I can I can do whatever I want in my quilt. <laughs> you do whatever you want in your quilt. But I'm just saying, well, this is where I'm getting inspiration for my fabric from, right? And it, the black, the white with black polka dots, that's just kind of the reverse of snow falling on a on a, on a you know on a cool night. Or a pretty night. There we go. Isn't that lovely? With the little strip. Okay. So now let's press these two. All right. So we can line up our other side fabrics and finish these two houses off. And get our neighborhood on the go. I can't believe we're already block 11. So exciting. So exciting. Okay. Let's move this here. And we're just going to do our layout. Here is just simple, very easy with the black. Uh, with the you know, colorful dots on either side. And then this one, because again, we did it directional, we have to make sure our birds are in the right direction. Did I cut those too long? What was supposed to be? Whoopsies. Hold on. Five. I have a feeling those are longer than five. There, they're five and a half. Okay. Well, I was like, wait a second here. What's going on? Something is just not right. Where is my. Oh, oh, oh. That's where my big ruler it is. Six and 31. It needs to be five, not five and a half. Okay. That's all right. Made a little mistake on the cut. Better too long than too short. That's for sure. Okay. So back here lined up. Those are five. Those are five. Okay. It was just this one I cut. And then we want to make sure we're sewing those together. And then this is going to be our beautiful top for it. Okay. So let's just put a pin on either side and then we'll sew those down for both blocks. Okay. For the beautiful winter bird. 
I, there was not a lot of this fabric and I was really, it was iffy, iffy it was actually, if I was gonna get that directional one right here. So there was a couple of sections that uh, it was, um, it was not going together. Okay, okay, okay. All right, sew that together. Right down on either side. And be very, very consistent with your seam allowance. If you need to mark something on your on a sewing table, please use masking tape or painter's tape and mark on that. It is easily removed without leaving a sticky residue or anything else like that. If you happen to have no other choice but to use like, you know, duct tape or tuck tape or anything like that, you can use a magic eraser to get rid of the residue if it happens to leave something behind. Or you can um, uh, just use a, like a nail polish solvent sort of to, to help that along, okay, to help uh, get that uh, glue residue up after, if you wanted to. I've, I've done that many times. I'm a big fan of masking tape and painter's tape. Very helpful. You can use it on your rulers. You can use it on your sewing table. You can mark it on your own, your own sewing table, like, you know, like this table and that table. Your cut table, was it, I guess was what I meant to say. Oop. See, pushing the pedal, not even at it. <laughs> Just trying to line them up properly. Oh, 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 oh. What's going on? Oh, you're being persnickety, no me. that too because I don't trust it now. Sometimes you're just not sure it's best just to reload the bottom and the top to prevent any you know more frustration especially when things don't want to behave. They're misbehaving. Right, now let's put our top on this one with our beautiful birds, the winter birds. Put our roof on. Now there's no chimneys with these. I mean, if you wanted to be creative and make your own chimneys, by golly, you have that. Or you could probably even just use some buttons as uh, to make a chimney too. I mean, let's just be creative, right? You can just use a nice big zigzag stitch. Come up and down. You control it. Have fun. Free motion one. Be, be creative. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love that one. That's probably my favorite block. Okay, let's finish off Ooh, our other one here. Spread it open. Make sure we have our Santa and snowman and reindeer all face up, ready to have some fun with the hedgehog roof and the beautiful colorful lights. Now this has been a fantastic adventure and I really thank one of our fans from Australia who suggested this to us. So Melanie, thank you very much. It has been an amazing adventure and I don't, I don't know how to thank you. It's, it's been really fun. Okay, so let's put this one up here and this one will go down here. Yeah, trying to even out the darky bits a, a little bit with the lights. Okay, so let's put our, our tops on. And then we'll sew those two little house stacks together to make our nine stack and then our border on either side. So this ends up, end up being a 21 by 18 inch block. And make sure you stay tuned for Friday when we will be give, uh, doing the next one, which is block 12. Because like I said, we have to catch up on a couple. And this is the last one we have to catch up on. So you guys will be getting this video early. Hopefully you're working away at your project and I can't wait to see it. Okay, there's that one and that one. And then, oh, let's put our top on this one. I thought I had already, but I hadn't. I was just finishing the other row. Let's put that there. 
It's just a background. Just a nice neutral background fabric. I didn't choose anything too, too dark. I, I thought about choosing blue, but then I wanted to add a lot of blue to the project. So I really had this like marbly cream colored fabric that oh, I thought would uh, really um, be lovely uh, with this whole uh, this whole project coming together. So okay, again, making sure our tree is upright or tree our house is upright. I've been thinking about putting up our Christmas tree. The question is, where do we put it? So it's not like we have a lot of space. <laughs> and and what was the tree last year is now Sophie's space, and I'm not taking that away from her. So, all right, let's pin these together. And of course, there's a nice little seam right in here that we can match up to make sure everything's nice and square. Okay, so we're just going to put it over here, pop a few pins in on either side, so on down. And then we'll add our little uh, bit of, um, I guess, um, side block fabric or uh, border fabric, block border fabric. Okay, so that's that side. Let's pin this one here. Our beautiful weather has passed and now we're in for some nasty stuff. We actually lost power on the weekend for several hours. The house actually got kind of chilly, so we were kind of concerned about that. I have asked uh, for someone to come and look at our pellet stove, so. We're getting that sorted. Better sooner than the later, as winter is coming. <laughs> as it does in Canada. And here and then we'll do the other side make sure it gets flipped out so we're not tucking it in there we go perfect I've had a few people ask me how I'm going to quilt this up. I'm just because, <coughs> sorry, of the uh, time uh, restriction, I'm just going to do a lovely just edge to edge to it. And probably something very simple like um, swirls or, or circles and loops or something. Very, 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 very simple and very, uh, very neutral. <coughs> sorry about that. Okay, so all we have to do here is add our two little sashing bits onto the side of this block and we are done. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna give it a nice little press. And then here is the other one. So I'll finish that off. Okay. Some different fabrics, some same fabrics, but still each one is very unique. So, okay. Thank you everybody for watching, liking, and subscribing. We greatly appreciate you here at the Mama Pop Quilt Shop. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Happy to have new people and the bell for notification. All right, we'll see you soon. Thank you everybody. Block 11.